<laughs> Hello. And I must have it all the way. Is it on now? All right, thanks. All right. Um, didn't have my microphone on. Sorry about that. Just saying that the, the lectures are recorded for the benefit of both the online and the, the campus-based class. Um, if you're in the online class, you are welcome to come in and sit on, in on any classes or any labs. Uh, and in fact, if you are in the campus class, you're welcome to come in and sit on any of my other labs. And if you have questions about when those are, I'll be glad to give you a hand with that as, as it becomes uh, more important. So if you're having trouble with something, you know, consider that as an option. If you're in the online class, you can come in. If you're in the campus-based class, you can come in and sit on one of my other labs. All right, what I'd like to do is cover uh, the basic uh, material uh, as far as like how the course will be run and that sort of thing first. And then we'll probably get into a bit of the, the actual course material today. And we'll talk about what your first lab assignment is and what you can do about it um, today and, and go from there. All right. Um, how many of you are not familiar with ANGEL, which is the course management system? Okay, we have a couple of people. Um, probably would be best for um, you and I to, uh, you know, the two of you and I to spend a little bit of time in lab. I'll give you a very brief overview of it, and then I can spend a little bit more time in lab showing you how it works. But all materials in the class are uh, available online via ANGEL, which is our, again, our course management system. Um, that means I don't hand out any syllabuses or assignments. They're all posted there, which is great, because then if you lose it, you can just go and, and get another copy of it online. You don't have to worry about that. All right. You access ANGEL by going to the URL of angel dot lorraineccc.edu. So instead of the regular lorraineccc.edu, it is angel dot lorraine ccc.edu. And when you do that, you will get a login screen that looks like this. And your username is simply your um, student number. And your password is one of these things. And we can try that in lab for those of you that are not familiar. It will either be the last four of your social security number, or your student number, or if you've changed it in a previous semester. When you log on, you'll see a screen that looks something like this. Now, it's going to look different for you based on the uh, classes that you are enrolled in. All right. Um, it will also look a little bit different for you because you're uh, a student in the class as opposed to an instructor. So your screens won't look exactly the same as mine, but they'll look close enough for you to get an idea. You should have every semester that you've been enrolled here. Uh, listed. And our class, again, regardless whether you're in the online or the campus class, you go to CISS 216 and click on it. There are, um, the, the main tab where, where most of the information is on is the content tab. So let's click on that. Communicate allows you to send email to, to me. Uh, through the course. Um, grades and manage uh, allow you to see, uh, actually I think it's reports for you, allow you to see your grades and get a report on your grades. But we'll spend most of our time on content. If you have other questions, um, we can address those in lab. This getting started is mainly for the folks in the online class. I'm, I'm kind of talking you through the stuff that, that we're, that, that's described there. Um, Course information is very general information about the course. The, the highlights of that are, are two pages, one of which is a syllabus, the other which is a description or a discussion of the different ways that you can communicate with me. All right. Um, we then will have a folder for each week in the class. There's 15 weeks in a class, so we'll have a folder for each one of those. And we'll look at the week one folder uh, a little bit later. 
There's a resources folder where I've posted uh, useful links that I've just found and uh, um, students brought to my attention or I've discovered that I think would benefit uh, you for the whole class. All right. There's a folder about the semester project. Um, it's probably not too early to start thinking about what you might want to do for the project. So uh, I won't discuss this today really in any detail, but I would suggest you to read these first three documents, the project overview, the design, and the completed instructions. So that when I do discuss them, you, you kind of have uh, an idea about it. Finally, there's a discussion form that you can post any questions that you have to. So, this is pretty much, again, we're not going to really cover anymore other than be aware it's there. Here we'll come back to, in a future class, discussion form, nothing to discuss, all right, uh, as of yet. We'll spend most of our time today talking about the course information in week one, all right. When we go into the course information, um, we have the syllabus here, communication methods, which are a list of all the different ways you can get a hold of me. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Content organization that just kind of talks about how the folders are set up. And lastly, copyright information for educational projects. Uh, when you're developing websites, you might, for example, want to use images that you found on the web. Are you legally allowed to do that? Well, yeah, because we're in an educational environment. You couldn't do that if you were running your own business or even a personal website. But because we're in an educational environment, you have a little bit more flexibility as far as copyright laws are. So this sort of summarizes uh, that. The main point of this is, you know, don't take too much and give credit where you got it from. So just like you might footnote a quote in a term paper, you'll put a little note on your page saying this image was gotten from the official Cleveland Browns website or something along that lines. These two read on your own. I'm just going to talk about these two. All right. We'll go backwards. Communication methods. Here's a list of all the different ways that you can contact me and when it might be a good idea to do them and how quick you can expect a response. All right. I have a few paragraphs discussing sort of my view on, on student-teacher uh, communication. The main point to remember is that me and most instructors are more than willing to meet you halfway on things. If you're having problems with an assignment, you're having difficulty, there's something you don't understand, you know, most instructors are willing to go that extra mile to give you a hand, but you've got to fulfill your responsibility as well. And that responsibility is to bring it to our attention, you know. It's, it's you know, when I'm up here lecturing, if I see people looking, nodding, or sitting there, or whatever, I don't know what's going on in their heads. I can't tell for sure, do you understand the material, do you not understand the material, all right? And if you're working on a project and you're not making progress or you don't understand it, by all means ask. Ask as soon as you're having difficulty, all right? I know a lot of people like to like, figure out their own problems on their own. And that's an admirable quality to a point where you feel like you're spinning your wheels and not making any progress, that's where you need to, to raise a flag and, and ask for help. All right? So here's a list of the different ways that you can uh, contact me. You know, you're welcome if you're in the online class to sit into a, a campus lecture. So you can come here Tuesdays and Thursdays, BU 105 at 11 a.m. And, and sit in. Both Students in the campus class and in the online class can come and sit in on any of my other campuses' labs. I have, this is the only lab I have on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I have three other lab sessions on Mondays and Wednesdays. And I can give you the exact time and rooms as soon as I remember what they are, <laughs> all right? Because I don't know what they are yet, all right? But you can come in and sit in. You'll see how our labs work. For the most part, your labs are a time for you to work on your assignments. You know, typically, now I won't say never, but typically I don't lecture in the labs or I don't have an activity. Typically it's, it's open free time. You have your assignments, I'm there to answer any questions, and you can work on, on your assignments. Um, which means that if people don't have questions, I'm just sitting there, you know, either answering email or reading a book or whatever. So 
why not invite folks from my other classes in if they have problems? And then again, I extend the same courtesy to you, that you can go in and sit in on my other uh, classes labs if you want. For those of you in campus class or online, you can watch the lectures, the video of the lectures. There is a discussion board, which I pointed out, where you can ask questions. Consider um, the discussion board being like raising your hand in class. If you have a question that you think other people in the class would benefit from answering uh, or from hearing the answer to, then post it to the discussion forum. All right. Whereas if there's a problem more of a personal nature, you know, something maybe related to your specific project that really isn't relevant to everyone, it's probably better to email. My point, though, is don't agonize about it. You have both of these available. Use one of them. Flip a coin if you need to. All right. Um, you can send me email within Angel. Again, that's via the communication tab. There is a chat room in Angel, and I have not done this often, but there is a potential if, if people are having trouble with a particular topic that I may run an online chat at a certain time during a day. And, and folks can, can log on and we can discuss issues like that. I haven't done it very often, but it is available. You can call my phone and leave me voicemail or, or talk to me if I happen to be there. Um, it's generally better to send me email than to call on the phone. All right. You can do it if you want, but I check my email compulsively, even when I'm not on campus. Uh, whereas my voice messages, I typically only check when I am on campus. So um, it's probably better to email me, but I know sometimes email might not be available. You're also welcome to call me during my office hours, which we'll get to in a second. Office hours, I'm, I'm on campus uh, several other hours uh, outside of class in my office. Um, and, and my main purpose in doing that is to answer any questions that you have. Um, I don't have the, my office hours finalized yet, and when I do, I'll post them. They'll be effective starting next week. So there's no office hours this week, um, but um, they'll be posted next week. Important thing to realize about those office hours is if they don't work for you for whatever reason, your work schedule or whatever, we can always arrange something else. All right. Or you can sit in on one of my other classes labs. So um, you can do that. Lastly is um, my LC email. You can send an email either through Angel or through LC's email. Really doesn't matter which one you do. All right. Um, <clears throat> if none of these methods work for you, contact me and we can make other arrangements. I think it's important for me to set expectations. Like if you notice, you know, if you send me an email, I'd expect with 48 to 72 hours to give you a response. Email with an angel, I would expect a little quicker, probably 24 to 48 hours. All right, so that's part of the reason I do this is to sort of set your expectations. So, you know, you don't send me an email at noon and then at 12.30 start to wonder what's going on, all right, that you know that, hey, it might not be until later on today that uh, I get a response. But the other reason I point this out is, again, to show you that there's a bunch of different ways you can contact me to, to discuss issues if you do have issues. All right? That's sort of the, the, one of the big purposes of showing this. A variety of forms, either online or in person, that we can address your problems. Again, provided you bring them to my attention and discuss them with me. All right? Any questions at this point? All right, let's take a look at the syllabus. I'm not going to go over every line in the syllabus because I know that one thing students love more than anything else is reading syllabuses. So I'll leave that joy to you to, to complete on your own time. And I do expect you to read it, but I, I also am going to hit the highlights of the things that I sort of want to emphasize and, and bring out and, and sort of bring out some discussion points. All right, here's general contact information of where I am 
and, and how you can get a hold of me. My email account, office hours to be determined. Other hours by appointment, you're welcome to sit in. Also accessible via Angel or that email address. Here's a description of the class. Here are the outcomes of the class, um, which is essentially when you're done with the class, you should be able to do these things. All right. Um, this should be more than flowery language. You know, we have to create these when we create a new course. But really, these are the main points why we're here, why we are here, so that you can do these things. All right. So it's important to read through these and sort of have an idea. This is sort of the big picture, if you will. What we expect once you get out of class, what you'll be able to do. So you can read through those on your own. Textbook, we have one textbook. Um, I think it's a pretty good textbook. Funny thing is, is in different classes, there's some classes that I have the choice of three or four excellent books. There's other classes where I hate all of them. All right, this is a fortunate case that I, I kind of like that textbook. All right, so it's the good news for this class. You do need some sort of storage media. Um, the, the, the files that you store on the computers in the lab disappear the next time the machine is rebooted. All right. Um, so therefore, bring a USB drive, email it to yourself. There is, you have some space up on Angel that you can upload it to. All right. The point is, is you can't leave your files there on Tuesday and expect them to be there on Thursday. Um, the machines start fresh each time, which is uh, very valuable in fighting against viruses or, or spyware or whatever that, get, that accidentally get downloaded. All right. Um, I would suggest that you check uh, Angel between classes, all right, for a couple of reasons. First of all, if I have any announcements to make, you know, um, I will I will post them to Angel. You know, if if something happened and I was, uh, you know, if I was ill and I did not expect to be in class the next day, I might post that. All right, so it's good to check for that. Um, in addition, on occasion. Um, if I get a question in class that I don't feel I've given a adequate answer to, maybe you ask a question and it, it's a stumper, I don't know the answer off the top of my head, or I try something and, and for some reason I'm just not getting what I want to work to work right, you know, for whatever reason, um, I'm not shy about saying, hey, you know, I'll take a look at it after class and I'll post the result. So to kind of tie up those kind of loose ends, I'll, I'll do that. In addition, especially when we start bringing assignments in, um, as I grade assignments, you get a message saying what your grade is. And in some cases, or in many cases actually, you're given the opportunity to rework stuff. All right? um, that's something I believe pretty strongly in. Uh, and I must believe pretty strongly in because it causes me all kinds of extra work. All right? So you can tell us something that, that I, I feel very strongly about. In my mind, it doesn't do me any good for me to say, you did this wrong, if that's where it ends, right? It's important for me to say, you did this wrong, you need to do this instead, or you need to correct this, so that you learn how to do it right, you know? Uh, think about it if you were on a job. If you were on a job and you were developing web pages, if your web page didn't work, they wouldn't say, oh, okay, well, I guess the page doesn't work then, go on and work on the next page, right? You'd have to go back and correct it. All right, so I feel very strongly about that. Um, and if anything, I, I think that is good because then, you know, if there's something you misunderstood or whatever, fine. No blame. Let's just make it right and, and make the assignment right. So it is important that you check your, uh, the email that you get uh, in Angel between classes. That way you can see if I have any comments or suggestions for improvement or uh, give you a chance to rework the assignment. Here's some paragraphs concerning my approach, some basic college policies. The only one of these that I want to really highlight is my policy on late assignments. Um, I tend to have a pretty flexible late assignment policy compared to some professors. Some professors are very rigid. If the deadline is 8 o'clock, it didn't say 8.01, right? And there's value to that. 
But I also think there's value in being more flexible. Um, the one thing I do ask you to do is, again, be in communication with me. If, for example, you have the flu, or you're going out of town for, uh, for work or for a personal situation or whatever, you don't need to give me like tons of details. I don't need to see copies of airplane tickets and, and doctor's excuses and that kind of stuff. But just a heads up to say, you know what, I'm running behind on this, I'm going out of town, I expect to have it done next Tuesday instead of Thursday. That's fine. You don't need to go into details and so on. Um, I will be much more flexible if you do something like that and you'll have much more opportunity to rework your assignments if you do that. What, what irks me is when, you know, week eight, I start getting week one assignments from people that I haven't heard from since the beginning of class. You know, and that's probably a little more typical in the online environment, but it happens in the campus environment too. Then I don't know what to make of it, right? If there's a personal situation you don't want to uh, divulge details, that's fine. I, I don't expect to need it. But just some sort of heads up to let me know, hey, there's something I'm dealing with and I might be late on these assignments. Now, the one thing that you should check with yourself, though, is if this happens on a one or two assignment basis, all right, that's fine, that's understandable. But if you notice consistently that you're never able to get assignments in on time, then we need to look at what we, what we need to do to, 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 to make you uh, turn the assignments in on a more timely basis. You know? Do you need some extra help? You know, can I answer questions for you? Do you need to spend more time in lab? Do you need to spend more time reading the book? You know, then we can look at what's wrong if it becomes sort of a habitual thing. So as a general rule, if you're getting the assignments in on time and you're getting full credit, you're in great shape. If you start to fall behind as far as getting the assignments in or you're not getting full credit, that's probably the time for us to step back and say, you know, what can we do to, to get you back on track. You can read the details of that policy there as well as the rest of them. Your um, assignments will work this way. You'll have a, a bunch of assignments, um, probably my, my guess would be 13 or so assignments, almost one a week, all right, uh, for a total of 65 points. So that would be worth approximately five points each. If for whatever reason it doesn't work out that way, you know, maybe, the, maybe we only have 12 assignments that are worth five points each for whatever reason, uh, then I just prorate it, all right. Then I, I multiply and you get, you get the 65 points worth and I, I prorate it. You have a project in this class, um, and the project is done in two portions. There's first the design of it, where you sort of plan out what you're going to do, and plan out what's going to be part of your website, and then there's the actual execution of it, where you actually create the web pages for it. Um, and again, it's worth 15 points for the design, 20 for the total, giving a total of 100 points, all right? Um, from there is the standard 90, 80, 70, and so on. Here's the schedule that we have for the class. All right. We have a list of the week. I just use Monday of the week just, you know, to keep it simple. I know we only meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Here's the topics that we're going to talk about and that you should read in the textbook. Has everyone read chapter one? You are all behind. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, chapter one um, is the topic of this week as well as the course introduction. Now you'll notice that there's a column for the assignments that are due. All right. And I have this down due Wednesday of the indicated week. That probably should say Thursday. I was, I mistakenly when I made this thought that this class was Monday and Wednesday, uh, not realizing it's Tuesday and Thursday. So we can say the assignments are due Thursday uh, of the indicated week. So there's no assignment due this week. Next Thursday, your first lab is due. All right. So that would be the 31st of, of, January, your first lab is due. And then 
a week from that, lab two is due, and so on. So whatever um, the Thursday is in this week, that's when this assignment is due. All right. Your project is, is due the week of 4-8, so whatever the Thursday of that week is. I think that's 4-11. My math is right. And then finally, your final project is due Thursday of finals week, so that would be 5-16, I guess. All right. Questions? All right. Let's look at the week one folder and let's look at what your first assignment is. Then we'll start talking about how you can complete that first assignment. I try to stay a little bit ahead, though truth be told, this will probably be the only week I am ahead, <laughs> right? Because after that, you know, things sort of catch up. But some people like to work ahead and, and, and so on. Every week's folder is going to look like this, all right? There will at least be two things in it, all right? There will be a to-do this week, which is sort of a list, an overview of the topics uh, for the week, and then there will be a lab assignment. In addition, the lecture videos will be posted in each week's folder. So later on today, in this, there will be a lecture. If I use any example files, those will also be uploaded, all right? Um, People complain sometimes that it's hard to see some of the details of the coding in the video, and that's true. That's one reason I provide the files as well. That way, if you're having trouble seeing something on the screen, you can actually see my copy of the file, and that might, might help you out. All right? So, example files and lecture videos will be here as well. Let's look at what you need to do for this week. All right? Goal number one. Familiarize yourself with the course in Angel. That's what we're doing today and we can continue to do in lab. The rest of the thing are the topics for discussion, which we'll be starting in a minute or two here. All right? And are covered uh, in the textbook. Activities, what you should do. All right? Read through this material in Angel. I know we covered some of it, but you should go and, and read it through more thoroughly. Do the assigned readings as defined in the syllabus. Either attend lecture or watch the video. All right. Practice the stuff that we learned on your own or using this great tutorial that I have here that talks about this. Introduce yourself in the uh, class discussion forum, and post any questions that you have. All right. Finally, your assignment, which is, again, not due until next week, it's assigned this week, it's due next week, is Lab 1, which is for you to go to the web and research the following topics. Find out what they mean. Find out what they're about. All right. This is just a chance to sort of get an overview. You know, you're all coming in with different levels of experience. Maybe some of you have done some web development before. Maybe some of you are brand new to it. Regardless, go and find some information about these three topics. HTML, HTML5, and CSS. Ultimately, you will create a web page that has an article about each of the topics summarizing what you've learned. So take what you've learned about HTML and write a little paragraph summarizing that. Likewise with HTML5, likewise with CSS. Now, there's a set of tags in Chapter 1 that you should use uh, in doing this, and um, you know we'll go from there. All right? We haven't talked about what tags are yet, but again, we, we will uh, cover them for the rest of class today, and then going into um, Thursday's class. So. Today, all right, in lab, you may not be quite ready to write the web page yet, but that's okay because it's not due until next week. But you could at the very least start doing your research. Go to Google and look at 
HTML and find out what HTML is if you, if you don't know what it is already. Find out what HTML5 is. Find out what CSS is. So you can start doing your research and writing your paragraphs even if you're not quite ready to do uh, the HTML actually creating the web page. All right. So that's what you can work on in lab. If you have done some HTML before, all right, or if you've read through chapter one, um, then you can start on it. And, and we'll talk about um, exactly how to create it and the tags that you'll use and all that going forward. And, yes? Since we're submitting our assignments via Angel, they're not going to be due at the beginning of class on Thursday. They'll be due at the end of the day. That's correct. Well, 11, 11, yeah, right before midnight, right. And, and believe me, it's not like I'm sitting there at home like, ah, okay, click, 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 you know. So, yeah, I mean, just get it in that day. That's fine, all right. And, and, and it's funny. It, it, it always cracks me up, you know. I always get, how do I want to say? I always think it's, it's kind of funny that people ask those questions until I realize there are instructors that if it's due at eight, it's due at eight. You know, where Dropbox. Dropbox disappears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't do that. It's too much work for one thing. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, um, let's start talking about web pages. Let's pull up a web page. Who has a favorite web page? No one has a favorite web page. Has ever, anyone ever seen a web page? <laughs> okay. We have. Good. Let's say I'm trying to think what I want to look at today. Um, let's see. It's snowing. Let's, let's Google cross-country skiing. Let's look at this. All right. Here's a web page. And let's look at, and let's try to identify the different stuff that's on this page. All right. What are some of the different kinds of things on this page? Well, there's words, number one. All right. All right. Okay. You know, free shipping with $50 minimum purchase. All right. What are some other things that are on this page? Categories. Yeah, categories of items. All right. Over here they have different kinds of items. And underneath that they have uh, sub items, right? You could say they have several lists, right? And then they have lists that they have several categories and then a list of items in that category. That would be uh, one way to, to, to say that as well. What else? I thought I heard something else. What else do we have? Tabs. Tabs, which are links, right? For example, if we go here, that takes you to another page. We go here, takes you to another page, and so on. So, we have just some text, all right? There's some paragraphs of text. That's one thing. We have categories, category headings, if you will. We have lists of items in that category. We have links. All right. What else do we have? Images. All right. And yeah, that's probably most of all what we have. We have one other thing that we won't talk about until later on uh, in the class, and that is we have like a drop down, all right, here where we can put some information in. Oh, actually, that's not a drop down, that's a text box, all right, where we can enter our zip code to find a store uh, and so on. Let's look at this page. Let's look at the, the code for this page. Almost every web page, if you right mouse on it, there's something that says view page source. That way you can actually see the code that's involved. And there's a lot of stuff here, blah, 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 blah. Kind of hard to read.
All right. Let's let's stick here. If we look. Oops. Here is a category of gadgets and electronics. Binoculars, camp tools, compasses, electronics, and so on. We could find that on the page if we wanted to, right? Where are we at? Did I pass that? Actually, I don't see it on this page. It's probably if it's probably based on if you do a mouse over, it will show you um, that. All right. At any rate, one thing you notice about this is this is the HTML code for this. This is just one text file. All right? It's just text. It's just words. All right? Just letters, words, symbols. So the question becomes, how do just plain old words become a web page that looks like this? All right? In other words, how does a browser, and again, the browser is the, the uh, piece of software that you use to view a web page, how does a browser know that this is a link as opposed to just the words travel with REI? How does this know that the, the words that were in that file means show an image there and not show the name of the image? And so on and so forth. How does this know that this is a category and that these are items underneath that category? It's accomplished through the use of what are called tags. All right? And some of you when, you, when you're in a lecture class, will take the textbook and will do things like highlight it, right? You might have a highlighter, all right? And my one daughter, if I'm not mistaken, I color-coded her highlighters. So one color meant one thing, one color meant something else. But we're not going to be that fancy today. Let's pretend this was our textbook. Now, notice that, you know, different things here look different. It's all words, but they look different. This is a heading. This is sort of a special paragraph, so it gets highlighted, and so on down the line. Now, if I was lecturing from this hypothetical book, and I were to say that middle paragraph on this page is important, it's going to be on the test. If you were a highlighter, right, what would you do? You'd take your highlighter and highlight this and say important. If I were to say the paragraph in the third column, that's out of date information. We don't, we don't need to worry about that. You might highlight it in a different way, saying, hey, that's not important. It's not going to be on the test. All right? What are you doing when you're doing that? You're adding extra information. This isn't just a paragraph. This is an important paragraph. This isn't just a paragraph. It's a out-of-date paragraph, a paragraph that's not going to be on the test paragraph, and so on. So what you're doing, effectively, is you're marking up your book. And by marking up the book, you're giving additional information about what that text means. All right? So it's not just a bunch of words. These are important words. These are unimportant words. All right? That same idea holds true when we create web pages. In fact, the initials HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. 
hypertext means it's more than regular plain old text. All right? There's images, and there could be multimedia, and there could be links, and, and so on. So it's more than just plain old text. It's not just a display of words. It's words that, some of which we can click on and go to another page. There's images, and so on. That's what we mean by hypertext, more than plain old text. All right? Hyper just means more. Someone that's hyperactive is more active than normal. All right. Markup language means that it's a language, it's a set of rules, to how to mark up a document. And by mark up, we mean indicate what the different things on the document mean. All right. Just like in our textbook example, we physically marked up this to say what these different paragraphs meant. In our code, we mark up our code to show what different things on the page mean. All right? Well, it's pretty obvious how you mark up a textbook, right? You get a highlighter and just start circling things. How do we mark up our code? All right? We mark up our code through a, a set of tags in HTML. You know, tag is like an indicator. We're going to look at our first tag here. Our first tag is the H1 tag. And maybe it would be this guy here on our page, camping and hiking. Let's look at this. First of all, tags come in pairs. There's a starting tag and there's an ending tag. Starting tag is the less than symbol, the name of the tag, and then a greater than symbol. We then have the contents of the tag. We then have the closing tag which is the same as the starting tag, except there's a slash before the name of the tag. So what this says is everything between the start and end tag is to be treated differently than the other stuff on the page. Just like everything between here and here is different than the rest of the words on, on this page. Well, what does the H1 mean? The H1 means it's a top-level heading, top-level header, important, most important level heading. If you're making an outline, for example, this would be one of the top levels. Now, there might be some things underneath that, right? There might be some categories underneath it. For example, there might be tents, backpacks, and so on. Guess what? Yeah, please do. And in fact, let me do it so I can give them a dirty look. Yeah, amazingly enough, classes are actually going on. All right. There might be some sort of sub categories underneath this, or subheadings. If you're making an outline, let's say, about the stuff in the store, well, guess what? Those are included in H2 tags. So let's go and let's make a simple web page based on this and view it. <coughs> Excuse me. just using these two tags. Now, there's a lot of different software you can use to make web pages. We're going to use just a simple text editor. There's Notepad++ in the labs. There's just plain old Notepad. If you have a Mac, there are other applications you can use. So we're just going to use plain old Notepad. 
Notepad allows us to enter the text without doing any kind of formatting. You know, in Word you can do formatting and all that. We're not going to do it this way. We want control of the formatting, not Word or some other application. So we want to control the formatting through the tags that we create. So we don't want the application to do any formatting, so we're going to just use a plain text editor. All right, so let me put in what we have so far, H1, camping and hiking. H2, tents, H2, backpacks. If you've done some web development before, you'll notice that this isn't really a complete web page. It's sort of a fragment of a web page. That's okay. We'll dot the I's and cross the T's later on. Yes? That should be an H1. Very good. I frequently make mistakes just to see if you're paying attention. All right, we'll go with that, all right? Okay, so I've entered in these, these HTML tags. And again, tags come in pairs. There's a starting tag. There's an ending tag. And each of these tags means something special to the browser. Just like putting a star something means something special to you. That H1 means something special to the browser. And in the, this case, that H1 means it's a top level heading. And H2 means it's a second level heading. All right? Let's now go and let's save this web page and view it within the web browser. All right? Um, we're going to just save the web pages to our machine and we're going to view them in the web browser. Now, this is something that sometimes students get confused with, so I'll, I'll go over this. All right, and I'll probably go over it again next time. But when you save a web page from Notepad, you go up to File, Save. You don't want to save it as a .txt file. That's a plain text file. You want the browser to know that this is an HTML file. So you change that from text document to all files, and you change and you put in a name and you end it with .html. So, save as type, change it to all files, file name, something .html. We want the browser to recognize this as an HTML file and that's one way that it will recognize it. So I go in here and click save. Now notice it changed the name up here. And notice on our desktop, here it is. And notice what happens if I double click on it. If I double click it, it brings up the web page in the browser. And it shows us what it looks like. And notice the H1, because those are the top level headings, are the biggest. The H2, because they're a little less important, they're secondary level headings, are a little bit smaller. Now, Couple things that are important to note. First of all, there's only one file involved here. I've had students say, you know, should I turn in the notepad file or the web page? The notepad file is the web page. There's only one file involved here. I open it up through notepad and then I open the same file up through the browser. In my mind, that's like the difference between a photograph of a person and an x-ray, right? Photograph shows sort of the outside appearance, what everyone sees. That's the view in the browser. When you open up in Notepad, though, you sort of see the skeleton. You see the actual code that, that's behind it. All right? And therefore, you can look at the page either way. The public will be looking at the page through the browser. But you, as a developer, will also look at it through Notepad so that you can see it. Now, one thing that's important is to get the file extensions create and, or, or correct rather, and that's why, if you notice, I've turned on file extensions. That's actually a Windows option. Um, depending on the version of uh, Windows you have, it can be turned on a couple different ways. You can go to 
folder options, file types, I lied, view, and then click off hide extensions for known files. Because we want to see the actual full name of a file. Now I'll go over that again if that's a little confusing. But um, again, you save a file as a .html file. You can then open it up in Notepad. You can open it up in the browser. Same file, simply one is the x-ray view of it. One is the uh, surface view, what, what the public is going to see for that. So let's review. All right. These tags are what tells the browser what this different text means. Remember, in when we looked at the REI page, right, there were links, there were images, there were headings, there were lists. All those things were just stored in that file as just plain old text. Well, how did the browser know that this was a list and this was a link and this was an image and this was a heading? It knew it because the code was tagged. And learning HTML, a big part of HTML is learning all the different tags that you have available for you. And again, the first ones we start out with today are the H1s, H2s, goes all the way through H6, so you have H1 through H6. Um, but there's tags for everything else as well. There's tags to create an image, there's tags to create a link, there's tags for paragraphs and so on. Um, you can see a lot of those in, in chapter one and we'll be covering more of those on Thursday. So if you're comfortable in lab, take a shot at doing what I did just here. You know, um, The other thing that you can do is you can begin researching uh, those different topics for uh, your first lab assignment. Any questions? Yes. Well, I'm kind of old school and I stick with a text editor the whole time. The reason I do that is because um, in many cases, people then learn the tool, they don't really learn the HTML. And if you know the HTML up and down, you'll figure out how to use the tool. All right. Um, the tool tools sometimes take you down the path of least resistance and end up creating code that isn't really good. So uh, that's why, yeah, we focus on really learning the code well. All right. Other questions? All right. See you over in lab.